Everybody, are you ready for some clitoris time? <laughs> All right. Um, I'm an artist. I work um, with animals um, and like octopus, squid, having bobtail squid, mouse, and bat. And when I try to co-create with them, I learn about their behaviors. And of course, that leads me to mating behaviors. And if you look further into it, um, there's a lot of penis. There's probably too much penis. Uh, <laughs> when I was 19 years old, I went to the Penis Museum in Iceland. Um, they have this Im impressive lineup of penis from various animals. That was actually my first sex education. <laughs> but where is the clitoris museum? And it turned out there are very few studies around clitoris from non-humans. So I'll start this talk with a sex education that I wish I've, have, uh, I've had when I was 19 years old. It's a trivia. Guess whose clitoris is it? All right, are you ready? The first one. <laughs> it's a little bit similar to humans, and it's 10 centimeters long. Sloth? <laughs> Any ideas? Pig? Whale? Cow? No, it is dolphin. <laughs> and what's more impressive is dolphin masturbate on sandy floor, and they use dead fish as sex toy. Okay, next one. Whose clitoris is this? And Boba. Chimpanzee, gorilla. Bonobo, yes. <laughs> they have very large and visible clitoris. A young adolescent female bonobo is maybe half of the weight of a human teenager, but their clitoris is three times bigger than the human equivalent. And female bonobos often engage in the practice of genital to genital rubbing, tongue kissing, oral sex, and on average, they engage in this practice about once every two hours. <laughs> and as they mate, sometimes face to face or face to face sex while carrying a baby. <laughs> okay, that's bonobos. Whose clitoris is this? Lizards, snakes, crocodile, alligator, yes. <laughs> uh, and what about this orange clitoris? Getting closer. Lizard, yes, lizard. What about this one that the male and female can't tell the difference? Hyena, Hyena yeah. We have a lot of very clitoris, clitorate people here. <laughs> Hyena. And just like a penis, the clitoris in hyena is fully erectile. They erect in their greeting ceremony or social displays. And through this clitoris, they urinate, they copulate, and they give birth. And because of that, it makes mating very laborious for the male and makes it very hard for the male to physically force the sexual activity into uh, the female. Because the female needs to retract the pseudopenis and then create this opening, and then the male can insert. And when they give birth, baby need to come out of the clitoris, and so it often causes it to, for it to split, and has a very high death rate. Approximately 15% of the female die during their first time giving birth. Okay, here's a giant one, elephant. It's 16 inch, uh, 40 centimeter. <laughs> And uh, similar to hyena, they also have this kind of pseudo, pseudo penis, um, and they also need to retract when they want to have sex. So it's really hard for a male to force a female to have sex. Um, and uh, a, a common trait there is also a hyena and elephant, they're all matriarchal. So maybe there's some relation, right? Whose is this? That it looks like the face of a bat. <laughs> um, lemur, yeah. <laughs> okay, whose is this? With some. It's hard. Cat, closer. It's hard. It's, it's fossa. 
This is an adult fossa in Madagascar. Who says this? Fish? Anything else? Shellfish? They're in the water. Shark, seahorse, jellyfish. Something live longer, longer than us. It's tortoise. Yeah. <laughs> what about this one? It's actually, this one is the cover of the clitoris. That's why there's a quotation mark. It's from an, an amazing animal. Mo, what mo? It's the sternos mo. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? All right, the last one. Snake, yes, that snake. And we only found out they have clitoris in 2022. <laughs> Spawned by a team of female scientists. Also, so they have clitoris and they have two clitoris. It's called hemiclitoris. And they contain nerves and erectile tissue and suggest that they serve as a not just as a reproductive function, but also maybe also about pleasure. And the clitoris is important here because that in, uh, indicates the animal's sex is not about uh, coercion or force, but about pleasure, about seduction, about stimulation. Um, and of course, the clitoris was mis mistaken in snake as scent gland for many years. Science used to be dominated by men who weren't as interested in the female anatomy as their interest in the male anatomy. We talk about clitoris and G-spot, like we're talking about aliens. Is it really there? <laughs> we mapped the first anatomy of the correct clitoris after we mapped the whole human genome, and 20 years after we sent men on the moon. Which hunting guides from the Middle Ages refer to clitoris as the devil's teeth and claimed only which had one? So we decided to grow a living clitoris in a dish. Why not? <laughs> okay, so here are some signs. Um, in menstruation blood, there are stem cells, they are gold, they are pluripotent, means that they can be differentiated into specialized cells. Um, and you, these specialized cells have the potential to grow into organs. So potentially, we could grow an organ, a garden of organs from our menstruation blood. Wow. Yeah. So we collect our menstrual blood, we harvest the stem cell in it, and we differentiate them into cardiomyocytes, we can also call it um, erectile cell, and then grow, uh, and also the neural cells. And then we grow on a 3D uh, bioprint clitoris structure, so these are some neural cells uh, differentiated from the stem cell from our menstruation blood. We also developed a protocol uh, as an efficient and successful way to explant endometrial cell in culture from uh, menstruation fluid. This is 3D bioprint of the clitoris structure, and then we seed inside with the erectile cell and neural cells. And eventually it will twitch with heartbeat that the cells can produce. Um, so with that, we are able to produce clitoris that can sense and think. And if it can sense and think, um, it's a living clitoris, is it a sentient being? Can it sense arousal and have pleasure? Scientists have proved that human brain cells in a dish can play the game Pong. So what can a clitoris in a dish play? <laughs> we'll let them play Tinder. <laughs> So the next step of this will allow the clitoris swipe Tinder is literally think with their clitoris. <laughs> uh, I don't know how many of you are familiarized with this sex toy. Raise your hand. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, well, there's a, there's a vintage sex toy booth near here. You can get more educated. Um, <laughs> so it's called flashlight. It's an invert of your vagina. And so, like similar to this, you can potentially grow your own cells and use it as a sex toy. And then, so if you use it as a sex toy, does it have consent if you think it's a sentient being? 
What does consent even mean here when the clitoris can't talk, can't communicate with us? Um, and if I grow it with my own menstrual stem cell, I use it as sex toy, am I, am I masturbating? Um, and <laughs> what if I grow it, uh, um, like my collaborator, Wet Fighter or Lyra, they grow it from their menstrual stem cell and I play with those? Am I treating on my partner in that case? <laughs> Uh, can it, yeah, so who, who have the ownership, or if the clitoris have ownership on its own? Uh, can it be the externalized self? And what are the ethics of sexuality here? Can we have outside of body orgasm? Or have multiple clitoris, like the snake, have an orgasm orchestra? Okay, to follow the growth of the clitoris in a dish, subscribe us on OnlyFans. And we also plan to be on Pornhub soon. <laughs> Our handle is sentient clit. <laughs> and I also tried to make some image from me journey, and I put in lab grown clitoris, and it got censored. So instead, I tried lab grown orchid that is uh, have some um, that is very bad, and then it turned like turned out like this. It kind of feel like a clitoris. So we think, oh, why not we make clitoris from orchid then? Uh, so here is, we decellularize orchid, meaning we use chemical agent to remove the cells while maintaining its structural and biochemical, bio, biomechanical cues. And the decellularized orchid can then be repopulated with the erectile cell and neural cell that differentiate from our menstruation blood to produce a lab-grown clitorchid. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then there's another question come up. Is it the same as lab-grown meat? Because technically it is. Lab-grown meat, lab-grown clitoris. Um, and ideally you want to put it both in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm very excited to announce that today we have a feast for you. <laughs> we have a lineup of edible clitoris in a dish. There are only 30 of them, so it's first come, first served. So, <laughs> it's your birthday? Okay, I can do two. <laughs> All right, so help yourself. I'll play a video while you are taking it. So take it, don't eat it yet, and take it back to your seat and sit down. Right, so how about we grow a clearance from the 
your clitoris yet. Um, I see some people are, can't wait for it. Okay, so I'll guide you through a guided eating ritual. It's more like a clitoris leaking ritual. Okay, for people, oh, I want to make sure the birthday girl got one. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get into the mood. Begin by finding a comfortable position. Let's take a moment to arrive fully into the present. Close your eyes. Moisten your lips and tongue. Put the tip of your tongue onto the clitoris part of this dish. Lick it up, down, and all around. But remain focused on and aware of the pressure of your tongue. Start off slightly, gradually, Increase the pressure and speed. You can also play with the shape of your tongue on the clitoris in order to mix it up. Some clitoris like broad, flat tongue. Others like more pointy tip. Then slowly suck the clitoris into your mouth and hold it there. Once it's inside, stick out your tongue and lick it up and down, left and right. Try to get a rhythm going and throw in a few circling motions to mix things up. And once you feel the clitoris is satisfied with your work, feel free to swallow her and her wetness in the petri dish. <laughs> Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> All right, that's it. <laughs> Thank you.